Okay, we're back again. There we go. Oops. Uh, let me get some bit more shade. There we go. Hi, welcome back. Um, this is been my daily Perry tips for those people that only use Periscope. Features, tricks, tips, issues, challenges, etc. About Periscope. If you want to follow my other stuff, that's my Love Scopes. Those are earlier in the day, and I just finished mine for today. This one is about tips for using Periscope. And if you saw the title, you probably guess what this is going to be about. Um, after the initial excitement wore off, and people started using Periscope regularly, some unpleasant surprises happened. Phone bills. <laughs> Um, by the way, my name is Barry Selby. My website is barryselby.com for my other work, but this is something for the Periscope folks in my 30-day Perry Challenge and also the new group I just joined, which is the um, Perry... Repeat, please. Yeah, I would, I'll slow down and do it again. I just, just dropped it a couple of hints. I'll come back. My, um, I'm in a couple of Periscope groups, so the, I started doing tips on the Facebook pages. Now I'm doing them through Periscope, so anybody watching can get guidance and tips and keys for making Periscope experience better. So this is Perry Tips, and this is like day seven or eight of those I've done so far. So if you want to find out some of the other stuff, including my feed, my um, response to the new Periscope update, um, which I'll do that in a minute, I'll give you a little review of that one. But I'll talk to you today about something you might not be aware of, which I hope you will be immediately if you have a less than unlimited data plan on your phone. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. I appreciate that. Um, I'm grateful, and in fact, I didn't do it by intention but I've done all my scopes inside a Wi-Fi network. And if you want to do good scopes, first of all, you need bandwidth. Um, Periscope is a data hog. It loves space because it's shooting high quality video and then sending it straight to the server. That means you need to have a wired pipeline to let the data go through. I mean, it sounds silly. Well, that may sound technical, but it's pretty simple. If you're just sending a text message, it doesn't take much space. You're sending a voicemail, a little bit more space. Sending a video message, it's a lot bigger, which is what Periscope is. And it's two ways because you're coming back with hearts and with comments on the feed. That's a lot of data that has to happen at the same time. So Periscope is a resource hog, pure and simple, because it has to be. That means that if you're doing out the world scopes, which I don't do right now, which I might do, but not very often, it eats up a chunk of your data plan. Now. I'm probably speaking more to the US people than the folks in Europe, although I'm not sure what the data plans are requirements in other countries. But most of the plans in the US are limited now. I'm grateful that when I started on the iPhone back in 2007, I had unlim an unlimited data plan, which I still have. At least I hope I do. I haven't checked for a while. Even so, what the carriers in the United States have done since we had 4G, particularly because people were downloading videos and movies and music and everything off the web, they started throttling people's data plans, literally cutting down the pipeline width so that only so much data could get through. That is not good for Periscope. In fact, if you've seen people's Periscopes where it says data connection loss, trying to reconnect, that's probably why. If you want to have a good experience with Periscope, I highly recommend, if you're doing broadcasting, like this is a broadcast, definitely do it inside a Wi-Fi network at least. Um, or if you're going to do it on, on your cellular network, find a good, strong signal because it requires... Hey, Lisa, how are you? Nice to have you here. Because I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated as a, a viewer watching people's periscopes to drop in and drop out. And I know I'm on Wi-Fi where I am watching them. So it's not my end, it's theirs. So this is for them and for you. So if you're a periscope user, particularly if you're broadcasting, first of all, use Wi-Fi if you can. Second of all, if you're out in the world, watch your data plan and basically check your data plan frequently. A friend of mine got a very unpleasant bill from Verizon uh, last week because of this. And she said she's going to talk to them and saying, can we have some leeway or some grace for what happened? From what I was told initially, Periscope uses about, and this is just number crunching, about 250 to 300 megabytes per scope per hour. Now, I think it's actually more than that based on what I've been hearing. That means basically within one week, if you're shooting Periscopes, you can use over a gigabyte of data. That's a lot of data. That, if your data plan is only two gigabytes a month, means that in two weeks you've used up your whole data plan. Not pretty. So again, my advice to you, if you do lose a lot of periscopes, and I'm doing two a day, so I'm definitely needing this, is shoot when you're in Wi-Fi networks. One, because it doesn't use up your data plan, and secondly, there's more bandwidth available. You're not being throttled down. That's kind of the pro tip. Now, I'm going to skip over to what I talked about last week, because some of you didn't hear about this. 
and some of you on the iPhone got the new update and went, great, we've got a new update to Periscope. You can do landscape and stuff. Well, there were two big features in there. One was the landscape, one was the Facebook share. I want to reiterate what I said before about the landscape mode. It's very cool. However, it's not complete. And what I mean is this. If you're using Periscope a lot, you know that this is the normal format. And if you want to turn the screen, you can do that now. It works for a couple of benefits, which is when you do landscape mode, the comments go to one side and the, and the hearts go to the other side, so the person's face isn't blocked by the comments going up and down the screen. However, all the Periscope resources that got built when Periscope got launched haven't been switched over yet. So if you use Periscope and you happen to use a site called catch.me, which I use, K-A-T-C-H dot M-E, that's where all my scopes are stored. It stores them one way, vertically. So if you do a periscope in landscape mode, guess what? Everyone watching is going to turn sideways to watch it. That's not going to be fun. So my personal recommendation is until Catch updates to give you a horizontal version of the view, yes, catch.me. Mine are stored at catch.me forward slash Barry Selby, because that's my periscope handle. And you can set up an account for free, and once you turn in the settings, by the way, and I did this in my first Perry Tips last week, you can go ahead and put it to automatically catch your periscopes. The one thing to be aware of, and this is thing that I found out a little bit later, is you need to tell Periscope to automatically post to Twitter when you do your scopes, because that's what Catch is looking for. So you do Periscope without telling Twitter, Catch has no idea you did it. So that's the key thing. Um, I've dabbled in Blab, but not a big fan of it right now. Um, one, you need a very good, strong, this gives you even more powerful need for data connection. Um, but I was, I've been using Zoom, which in fact, one of my dear friends who's in our Facebook group, Michelle's been using, because Zoom is great for two, interview, two interviewees. You do side-by-side -side live, as opposed to Skype, we have to record it and play it back in side-by-side. -side. Blab lets you do four at a time, but it's not yet as, it's still a beta, and it's got some kinks that I'm still not very comfortable with. So Blab's a good resource, and it's, it's like the newest thing out and is the best thing out there right now, but there's still room for improvement. Um, if your iPad is in Wi-Fi, yes. Again, it's bandwidth, not the device as much. You know, your iPad probably is a good front camera, you need a front camera to be in Blab, in interaction. But the thing is, if you're doing stuff where you're going to be hosting Blab and stuff, it's all on the web, so it doesn't require a lot of bandwidth from you. Sorry, require a lot of power in your computer or device but it does require the bandwidth connection for, again, video communication, as I mentioned at the beginning about doing Periscope, same problem. So if you missed that, just go back and watch it in the review. Um, <laughs> that's a very good question. Why does everyone use headphones? Because we thought we had to. I did for the first dozen of my scopes, and I thought, why don't we try it without? And people could hear me fine. Key thing, though, the headphones people use, or I should say, if they're using earbuds, the microphone's right here. So if you're in a loud environment, background noise, planes flying over, you're in the middle of a crowd, you can be heard better with a microphone. If you're not using one, then your microphone and your phone picks up more ambient sound. So you make it less, like I was watching someone do a scope out in the street, I could barely hear them because there's so much background noise. So that one is kind of good to have earbuds for that. The big headphones, I don't know why, because if you're doing Periscope, you can't hear anything. Like I can see what you're doing, but I can't hear you. So it's really the microphone point. And one thing that I know, there are some good relatively cheap lavalier mics that clip on your shirt or your collar or whatever. Those are great if you're recording high quality again because you get much cleaner sound. And if you're going to repurpose your work, which I'm looking at doing some of my videos I'm going to use for either audio or onto YouTube, the better the audio, the better. The better the audio. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so this is a few pro tips being dropped in here. But I want to go back and just mention that one thing about the landscape mode again. The reason why I believe Periscope created a landscape mode in their update that came out on Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, the day after, is because Apple released the new Apple TV, which is going to be shipping next month. Apple TV has, it will have its own app store, which includes a dedicated Periscope app. I saw a picture of that, and I posted it on uh, Facebook last week, this week. That means that when you're watching on a widescreen TV through Apple TV, it's nice to have your Periscopes sideways. That's when it's useful. That's not for another month or two. So for now, my recommendation is when you do periscopes, keep them in portrait mode because catch.me saves them that way. And everybody else using periscope is usually watching them vertically. And oh, one other thing. If you start shooting the periscopes one way, don't turn the camera in the middle of your shoot. It looks really weird, just to know. And also I've seen bugs where people are doing 
but um, landscape mode periscopes. But it doesn't suck. It can be useful, especially if you're sitting. Now, one thing I'll say this: if you're doing a landscape one and you actually have more than one person in the view, that's good because you can actually fit them in more easily. If they're doing two people talking in front of the camera, that's going to become a new thing. Um, as a scoper. I haven't tried that actually, so I don't know that. That's a good. That that I don't know about. So I I haven't yet scoped because I don't like doing it in landscape mode to see if fact if there is going to be a comment disappearing or not. I thought it showed up on the side, and then the heart's the other side. I'll say this: it's buggy. I've seen people doing landscape scopes that switch automatically, like in the middle of their scopes. Yeah, I know it looks cool, but it's it's <laughs> it's not ready yet. It's not ready for prime time, you know. And that's the thing with periscopes: is there is a transformation happening. We're getting to a new level of features because it's a new app that's getting better and better. But you can't do, as far as I believe, I don't know for the Droid users, for Android users, if you actually can do landscape there either. So if you're doing landscape broadcast periscope, only the iPhone and iPad users can watch it. it doesn't work on Catch, and I don't think it works on the, on the Android either. So people are missing out. And my thought is, if you're building your audience and sharing your message to more people, the more people can watch it the right way around, the better. That's my thoughts on it. So, um, do you think Periscope will be super hot on social media? Absolutely, it already is. Um, it's but we're the we're the vanguards. Those of us using it, those of watching definitely are. But those of us using it are the vanguards. We're the pioneers. So we're basically climbing over the hurdles and the challenges by doing stuff with Periscope, like having the landscape mode issues. Um, but it's becoming a hot topic. I'm actually now just joined a new group I got invited to join um, called the Peri 10K, which is a conscious community of people on Periscope. Now, let me speak to this. This is one of my pet peeves. I did this one two or three days ago. Periscope and the huts, the huts are great to have, but Periscope has become a new expression for creativity. And there's a range of types of people using it. And some of the biggest um, heart collectors out there, as it were, are doing five or six scopes a day that have no meaning whatsoever. They've got millions of hearts, and I'm somewhere in the 17, 18,000 range, and I'm way ahead of some other people. Because I'm realizing more and more what I want Periscope to be for is an extension of my message. And I love listening to people and watching people on Periscope who are doing the same thing, where their message, their work, is shared through Periscope. That is where the meaning is for me. And I'm a big fan of people who are doing that. And with the 30 day Periscope challenge, that's what we're all doing, which I love about this group we're in. And this new group I just joined, like I should take invited to join through some people who are in it. I'm just watching them now, and they're doing these. Um, um, I forgot the word is, but they hand off the periscope to like five or six people, teaching the same subject. So it becomes a very educational format. And that for me is a really useful or good use of periscope, because periscope is an opportunity to share something. What you share is up to you, but if it's not useful, I'm probably not going to watch it. And that's why a lot of the women out there are flaunting their sexuality to get lots of hearts, but to get a lot of harassment and trolls too. And the problem is a lot of women out there doing good work are getting some of that crap as well. That's one of the things I talked about in my earlier scopes about blocking users who are trolling, basically giving sexual innuendos and negative stuff. It seems like I'm doing a recap of about five different periscopes on this one, but that's okay. Again, reminder, catch.me with a K, K-A-T-C-H dot M-E forward slash Barry Selby is where all of my current last 25, 30 scopes are stored. You can watch all of those there. The Perry Tips ones are every other one for the for last seven days. And then the, the Love Scopes, the rest of them. So I talked about a lot of these Perry Tips in more detail on those scopes. If you want to go back and watch them, you can. If you've got an idle Sunday afternoon, Saturday night, you're not doing anything, feel free to watch them. You might get sick of my voice, but that's up to you, not me. Um, so Back to the thing I started at the beginning with, just a reminder here for those people catching in late. If you are using your iPhone, your iPad on a wireless network, as in cellular, watch your data plan usage. You will find yourself really losing data and end up using a data plan completely, which means you'll get blocked or bumped or pay a penny. And worse than that, um, you'll have your data use um, throttled down because most of the companies like Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile, and AT&T, as much as they don't say it, that they do though, is they start to lower your bandwidth as you use more and more data so they can keep their carrier, um, their cell towers not overloaded, they say. That's the reason. 
that means that if you're doing periscope, it'll get worse for you to do periscopes later on because you can't get your signal through. So as much as you can, oh, there's things to say about that. As much as you can, use Wi-Fi networks. That doesn't mean you have to stay at home or your office. They're in Now I'm in LA, maybe other cities have this too, but quite a lot of the parks and some of the city centers now have free Wi-Fi networks. I don't know about the speed of the networks, but they are wireless. So if you can hop on the wireless network to do your scope, coffee shops exactly. Now, on that note, I recommend doing it outside the coffee shop where you can actually have some privacy instead of just talking your head off in the middle of the coffee shop to your screen. That's going to look kind of weird. But Starbucks and internet cafes, um, oh, I'm sorry about that. I have to like, um, I like espresso in the afternoons, but I like tea in the morning. That's my personal foible. But there are plenty of coffee shops, internet cafes, even libraries. Well, libraries are pushing it because of the volume. But there are a lot of places that have public Wi Fi now. If you are a Wi Fi user, you can get your scopes out more easily without one, eating a data plan, and two, you've got stable bandwidth. So your scopes become usable. Um, I'm starting to bring my scopes early in the day now. As of Monday, I'm probably going to do it between 1 and 3 in the afternoon because I've realized now from talking to some in England that they don't watch scopes at 2 in the morning, usually. And my 6 p.m. is too late for them. So I'm going to do mine early in the day going forward um, to reach a bigger audience because I've now got people following me in Europe, which is kind of cool. Um, part of the Perry Tenke, a lot of them are over there too. So that should give you enough to think about. And again, Wi-Fi is a way, a much easier place to do your scopes on because you've got better bandwidth and doesn't need your data, your data plan. Um, and if you've got feedback, you know, feel free to message me, stuff like that. You're very welcome. Thanks for watching, Lisa. I appreciate it. Um, again, you can watch the archives on catch.me. You find out by my site at barryselby.com. And um, I think that's it. Oh, and again, you can do one. This is another one of the tips I talked before. If you watch the replay, you can also give hearts on the replay. So hearts here and on the replay count. And um, that's enough tips for one day. Thank you for watching. Appreciate you being here. Thank you for putting it out. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, check out my stuff, my work. I'm going to at some point put all these scopes on YouTube. I haven't got that far yet. That's a whole other conversation and a whole other piece. When I do that, I'll teach you about that. Um, I will do a teaching this week about how to record your scopes with your hearts and your comments and save them that way. That was something I discovered last week from one of the people I follow. So um, I think that's it. Any other questions, any thoughts, any questions about Periscope that you might want answered that I didn't cover yet? Because you're giving the hearts which I appreciate. Any other thoughts, questions before I sign off? Can we once? <laughs> you know, you keep these hearts, I'm just going to sit here and wait for them. I appreciate them, so thank you. Um, but any other questions, thoughts about Periscope, what you're using it for, how it works for you, what you're looking for, any questions you need help with? Um, no? Okay then. Thank you for watching again. I'll be back tomorrow with both another love scope and a Perry tip. That's going to be our ongoing MO until I run out of things to talk about in either one of those subjects. The love scope's went in though. There's plenty to talk about in love and relationships. Again, follow me on, well, share the word with your friends. If you want to follow me, you follow me on Periscope at Barry Selby, on Twitter at Barry Selby, on Facebook, etc., etc., etc. It's all the same. And BarrySelby.com is my website. So thank you for watching the scope. If you have questions, if you want to send, actually, if you have Periscope questions you want answers to, you can send a direct message over Twitter. I'll get to that this week. Um, and hopefully, if you have any questions, you can go look at the archives and get some good tips from me there. Okay. Thank you again for watching. Thanks for the interaction and the questions. I always appreciate that because then I'm not talking to a plain phone. Um, it's good to interact. So thank you again. Have a wonderful evening. And I'll be back on again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves and be good to yourself. Bye.